Hello, my name is Benji, and if you're new here, you probably don't know that I started my plant journey with planted aquariums. Planted aquariums are aquariums that have aquatic plants inside of them. Recently, I haven't really been super into it, and I think it's because I don't really have a community to be able to discuss aquariums like I do with houseplants. But recently, I went to an aquarium shop, and I talked to the owner and became friends with him. I stayed at the shop for like five hours just talking about aquariums and plants and different styles and how to make aquariums he really like inspired me and energized me and now i'm super inspired to create aquariums again the last aquarium video i made was an aquarium tour like back when i first started my channel so i haven't talked about it much but i am happy to be able to share this part of me with you guys if you follow me mostly for house plants i think this will still be really interesting to you it's really interesting to me so i would think it's probably interesting for you as well if you're a plant lover and maybe through this video you can be inspired and maybe find a new passion. So today I am building an aquarium. I'm using my old aquarium that's like around five gallons and I'll show you guys how I do the hardscape and what I'm planting and my idea process and what I'm using. So I already have a lot of the equipment needed to put this aquarium together but I did go out and buy some tissue culture plants so yeah. Chris wanna say hello? You're in the shop. <laughs> Okay, let's get started. This aquarium is going to be centered around this super cool piece of wood that I bought. It was only like $20, which I think is a steal. What's really cool about LA is that there are a bunch of aquarium stores here. So I think I'm gonna just stick this like straight in the center and then use other pieces of wood to sort of like grab onto it and then also use stones around it. Right now I'm setting up the hardscape and hardscape is wood and rocks and things of that nature. This this step normally takes me a while because I experiment with different layouts and see how I want it. And I recommend that you take your time doing this too because once you've set everything up, it's really difficult to move things around and change the layout without making a huge mess. So yeah, take your time, experiment with different things, and really make sure that you like it before you start planting and stuff like that. Okay, so I think I'm happy with the hardscape and now I'm going to super glue the rocks and the wood and stuff together. So what I'm gonna do is use regular super glue and then I'm going to use these cigarette filters. I don't smoke, but I've seen this used to glue the rocks together because without something like this in between, the rocks won't really adhere together. So I'm going to try using this. I've never been successful with using rocks and glue together. So I'm excited to try this. I think it'll work a lot better. First, I cut the cigarette filter in half. And then I used the super glue on one end and stuck it onto the rock. And then I super glued the other end. And then I pushed the two pieces of rock together and I kind of just held it there. And then I sprayed it with water because there's like this reaction that happens with super glue and water that makes it cure faster or something. And then I put a bit more glue on the outside and I tried to cover up the cigarette filter with a little bit of sand. And it doesn't look the best, but it's good enough. And then I pretty much did this for every single piece of rock in the aquarium, which did take a while. Hello. Take a look at it and see what the place looks like. Well, that is true. Very, very true, very true, very true. I never knew her name was Vivian. So I pretty much glued rocks together for the next two hours and then it was night so I stopped there. But yeah, I have most of my hardscape laid out now. So now it is the next day. I moved my aquarium over here on the kitchen counter. All the glue is dry and everything is pretty much exactly how I want it and I'm really pleased with it. I'm gonna start wrapping the moss where I want it to go and then I'm gonna fill in the substrate and then start planting the rest of the plant. The moss I'm using is called Cala Castella. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the species name but it's like a compact moss that sort of hangs down and this is a tissue culture cup. It's free of algae and pests and it grows in like this uh, jelly medium on the bottom. And it was kind of fun. I was like picking out the moss with my tweezers. It reminded me of those like skincare extraction videos. Mm -hmm. 
and I continually sprayed the moss to keep it moist so it doesn't dry out. And this is the wood I'm using, it's called black wood. And pretty much I just lay the moss where I want it to go on the branches and then I tie it around with a cotton string. This is moss cotton from the brand ADA. And what's nice is that it matches the color of the moss really well, but you can pretty much use any type of cotton thread. I just tie the string around the moss multiple times and then I double knot it. You can easily buy tissue culture cups of aquarium plants online. There's a lot of online retailers like Boost Plant, Aqua Forest Aquarium, and Aqua Lab Aquaria. I also trim the flyaways to make it look more natural and compact on the branch. My moss tie job is pretty good if I do say so myself. What's cool about this moss is that it weeps down so I think it'll create a really nice appearance once it grows out. Isn't this cool how it's like grabbing on? I love when like wood looks like roots kind of. Once it has moss, I think it'll look even better. The substrate I'm using is called ADA Amazonia version 2. So I'm building up the back of the tank with substrate to create more depth in the aquarium. Typically you don't want just a flat layer of substrate. So you don't really need a fancy substrate like I'm using. I'll show you guys later in the video, but I have a very simple tank that just uses sand and it is very lush and green and successful. Now I'm adding a cosmetic thin layer of sand in the front. I'm not really gonna be planting anything in it and then I'm evening it out with this old paintbrush that I have. And then I'm also using the paintbrush to just like smooth out the back substrate and slope it the way I want it to be. I have this leftover piece of rock and I'm going to hit it with this wrench to get little bits to add some detail on the sand. You're probably not supposed to do it like this, but I can't find the hammer. So now I'm getting ready to plant my plants and it's easiest to plant when your aquarium isn't completely full of water. The first plant I'm using is called Monte Carlo. It is a foreground plant, meaning it's in the front. It has these nice small round leaves and it creeps along the bottom of the tank and creates a carpet. So the next plant I'm using is called Rotala H. Ra. It's a tall stem plant, so I'm going to be planting it in the background. And it has these really nice reddish pink tips. So the next plant is one of my favorites. It's called Hydrocotyl tripartita Japan. It has these really cute clover-like leaves and it grows extremely fast. So I'm putting that sort of in the mid-ground because it creates a bushy appearance. The next plant I'm using is called Rotala bonsai. It is also a mid-ground plant. It doesn't grow too tall and too fast, but it has a really nice vertical structure to it. And now I'm adding in the rest of the water. I'm using my hand here as a baffle so that way the water pouring in doesn't kick up the plants or the substrate. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since I finished setting up my aquarium. You can probably tell that my hair is a bit longer than it was in the previous clip. I should probably get a haircut soon. But yeah, the aquarium looks a lot different than it did before. What's really cool about aquarium plants is that with the right conditions, they can grow extremely fast. So I'm using a CO2 system for my aquarium since I already had all of the supplies necessary to do so. You might not know how people use CO2 in aquariums, but pretty much there's like a pressurized CO2 tank and then there's a regulator on it that adjusts the amount of CO2 that goes into the aquarium. And by injecting pressurized CO2 into your water, it increases the level of carbon dioxide in the water, which allows plants to photosynthesize faster and thus grow faster. And it also helps reduce and control algae. But CO2 is not necessary. It can also be expensive and a little bit complicated if you're a beginner. So yeah, the plants that I use for my aquarium, you don't need to use CO2 for them. For my filter, I'm using a 
canister filter. This one is a Zoomed canister filter. Canister filters are normally a little bit more expensive, so instead you could just use a hang on back filter, which I've used a lot of. For my light, I'm using a Hero Aquatics light. I changed out the light that I had before because the previous light wasn't tall enough and I needed a light to be able to be taller than my large stump of wood. The canister filter and the light are kind of more on the pricey side. They're like mid-range. In the description, I'll include links for what I'm using, but I'll also include links for cheaper alternatives that I've used before and I think work completely fine. So yeah, everything is growing super well. I added a few things, a tall grass-like plant in the back so that way it'll grow tall and completely fill up the back of the aquarium. I also added this other really cool plant called Hydrocotyle verticillatica, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm growing it out of the water because it's just like a nice stem and then it's a little circle pad at the top and I think it looks super cute. The moss is really growing in and it's starting to grab onto the wood and sort of like creep down like I wanted it to. And then the Monte Carlo, which is the carpeting foreground plant, is kind of growing in a little bit. I messed it up and it got uprooted, but that's okay because it's doing fine. The Rotala H. Ra is growing really fast. Like if you compare it to how it looked when I first planted it to now, it's like quadrupled the size and it's also putting out this nice pinkish red coloration at the tip. I'm also a big fan of the Hydrocotyle Tripartita Mini Japan. It's also growing super fast and I love the clover shape. I think like clover leaves and round leaves are super cute to me. I just love having that in the aquarium. I'm using a simple all-in-one fertilizer from the brand Nylock G. I'll put it in the description. It's really easy. I just do like half a pump once a week and that's all I'm doing. So this build, it wasn't super complicated, but I feel like it's a little bit more complicated than what a beginner would want. But I also do some really low cost, low tech builds, which means that you don't really have all the fancy like CO2 and substrates and things like that. So I have a 20 gallon aquarium that is just sand. For fertilization, I use Osmocote Slow Release Fertilizer, which is made for house plants, but you can actually use it in aquariums as a substrate slow release fertilizer. So I've had this aquarium up and running for about a year and a half now. It's all pearl weed. This is my favorite easy plant. If you're trying to get into aquariums, I highly recommend pearl weed. I also made like a very simple planted bowl aquarium on my TikTok. It went a little bit viral, I will have to say. <laughs> but yeah, I'll also put the link for that TikTok in the description because I think I have a tutorial on how I made that. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and enjoyed me sharing an interest of mine that I haven't shared in a while. But yeah, it's been really cool to kind of like rekindle an old passion of mine or something that brings me a lot of joy. And hopefully you guys can also experience the joy of creating your own aquarium and watching it grow and... It's a lot of fun, I promise. And you can also keep cute little like fish and shrimp and snails and stuff, and that's always super fun. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day and a great week. Bye.